we started a workshop where we're talking to each other in teams of two, and we're talking about what kind of lifestyle do we want? Red pill lifestyle, because a lot of it is just like throwing away so many fucking things, right? We don't want to, I don't want a car, you know, I don't want, a lot of things that people think they want, I don't want to buy a house, like I'm not, a lot of things people want, it's like I don't want, and that throws you in a state where you're not sure, and there's no, there's no guidance for us, because we're totally doing our own thing, right? You know, guys our age don't do new stuff. They're just kind of, the easiest thing is just to get a Ford truck and, you know, fit in with everybody else, right? But we're like trying to like find what the fuck, you know, getting rid of things and then you're free. And then you're like, what do I do? So it's not as easy as it seems, right? And there's not as many people to look up to, to, to think about, right? So I just want to go, go tell me what your partner said. Like, what does your partner want out of, you know, so we could start with you guys here. All right. yeah. I was speaking with Jack, and um, he wants freedom, which I believe he has, and he also wants stability, so he wants to get that balance. He doesn't want to be... He said he's travelled uh, full-time before, and now he wants to just find that balance between uh, freedom and stability. So I think that's not a bad thing. I think that's a sign of maturity, and he's kind of been there and done that. And um, he's finding his balance. And so, so you don't want to go to a million countries anymore. No, I mean I traveled for I traveled for a year and a half at one point in the past and lived in hotels every night. And I kind of like having a ba- I like seeing the same people every day. I like the continuity of having people who know me, who are around, um, and it helps a lot mentally. And I, I don't want to be... So, yeah, I mean, I'm interested in travel, but I want to have a base. And I think I want to... I value a lot contributing to the people around me. Like the people who are, like, in my sort of local community. That's you know, it's part it's what I lacked for a long time. So, like, I'm intentionally working so, on something. So, practically, out. does that mean living in one place for six months? Or? Yeah, living in one place for six well, months. Having a home base that I come back to where I see people. Being involved in local groups and just helping people. Like, I, I get stuck in my own head, but as soon as I'm helping someone else, I feel great. And so finding ways to generate that. Um, and, you know, prop, like where I actually am, I'm not sure. Like it doesn't, it doesn't matter so much. One of the things we were talking about, this is a bit of a diversion, but the distinction between form and essence. And like I'll get really attracted to, uh, the easy examples, like guys get really attracted to buying a Ferrari because they want to feel free and they want to go fast, right? But once you realize like, oh, you want to feel free and you want to go fast, there's like a hundred other ways to solve that problem. Um, and I'm looking a lot at, I'm trying to navigate now more through essence than through form. So instead of thinking like, okay, I want to live in a certain place and like make all these things happen. It's like, no, I want to be involved with people who are near me and I want to, uh, you know, be able to have some stability in my life and just navigating with those, uh, those instead of like, it's, it's, it's a mind trip. I learned it from a guy who studied Zen for a long time, but like trying to navigate through those essences instead of through the forms. Uh, and picking those out and making those what I put labels on. Does anybody have any advice about how to have a stability? You know, you're not full time in one place, but how do you have stability? How do you feel that stability? I mean, for me, I can just say, for for me, I, I have um, it helps me a lot is the twelve step meetings because I can just go to a meeting. There's a bunch of people who come pretty much every day or whatever. You know, it's a different. It doesn't really matter the topic. I'm just talking about social group, right? And they meet a lot, and I can go anytime. And I can talk to them, and then we become friends, and then we, I pick the guys I like or whatever, you know. There's a hundred people, as many as four cool guys I like. So then I'll start hanging out with them, and they're like my crew. And then I have that kind of like somebody knows me. Yeah. Somebody cares, you know, in Bangkok. Because if I just walk around, eat by myself, go to bars or something, I, I don't go to bars, but I mean, you know, that kind of yeah. thing. It feels like nobody cares if I live or die, right? So. Yeah. Yeah, and whereas back home, it's always easy because you got the people who know you, just neighborhood, parents, or whatever, you know. Yeah. Whereas here, you have to build it. You have to, like, logically. But so for me, that 12-step meetings help a lot. Yeah, yeah just, just because they're consistent. And yoga, yoga too. Because the yoga, people come to yoga, you know, every week I come, Nicholas is there, you know. It's always, like, usually me, you, and Charlie, you know, doing yoga. And it's like, I see the same person. And then it's like, oh, yeah, yeah. And we have a different connection than somebody in a 12-step group. So I like to have different groups. So for me, I have the two groups, and, you know, mainly. And then those two groups. And then I have my Ronin groups, my Ronin guys. So those three groups, 
allows me to feel comfortable in different places. Yep. But I totally know what you're saying. Because that, that's how people lose their mind, is that kind of like too free. Mm-hmm. And nobody's watching, nobody so cares. It's kind of anchored to reality. And yoga and your own and man group and the other thing you mentioned is like your anchor to reality because mine is my business. It's just, it's just, it's people who yeah, know me. That I kind of live, I could have, I could live. Yeah, the, 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 business the, and my children. Yeah, the group, the group's topic or whatever is not really the big thing because it's just groups of people. And then I'm always looking through groups of people to find good people, you know, and then connecting with them. So whether it's whatever group, it's just a way to find a good connection that's reliable, you know. And one thing about 12-step groups is some of the people live here permanently. So, you know, some of the people I met, like in 1990, you know, here, are still here. You know, they got a Thai wife, they got kids. I can just go see them, you know. And so that gives me a kind of a consistency. So, so what would you do? You, do you have any, anybody else have any idea when you, how you're able to do that? Just do something useful for others, like no, no big deal, no, uh, you know, no, no need to go to prisoners or you know that shiny uh, uh, charity thing, but just something useful. Yeah. Like, give back. You're saying give back to. The yeah, just community. you know, like my, my father used to clean the banks of a river, like you know. Sure. He, he got to meet many people. He, he, he was a fisherman, so he, he loved that kind of environment. So, yeah. Wow, that's a great point. Yes. God, that's a great point. You know, when I was in when I was in New York about Brooklyn, right? I was staying at Chime Time's place, right? And then uh, it snowed, so I had never lived in a place that snowed. You know, so so you know, I Chime Time said, "Oh, when it snows," because he wasn't there. He said, you don't know, shovel the snow because otherwise I can get sued, right? If somebody falls down on my house, property. So I was down there right away whenever it snowed. I'm shoveling. I t- went and bought salt and, you know, threw salt. Probably way too much salt, but I, was, I didn't know how much. I was just throwing salt everywhere. And I was fucking, you know, doing it up. And then the neighbors all started saying hi to me after that. And they're like, there's still good people in the world. Like, like they judge you harshly if you don't fucking shovel your front yard right away. In Brooklyn, and if you do it, you are a good member of the society, right? And I didn't even realize that. I just we are not above that kind of thing. Yeah, I just did it because time time was you know being cool to me. I figured I'll I'll just do this. And also, I didn't know how to do it, so I overdid it to make sure I did it right, you know. And it worked out great. And people were even to this day when I go back, like this summer for the summit. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy who used to have a motorcycle gang. He lives nearby, and he's like he's like. How are you doing? My son says, oh, you know, and everything. <laughs> everybody notices. So, we, we, you know, living from contribution, right? I'm thank you for that. That's that's important because. Uh, but you like practically, how do you? It's yeah. um, it's a fundamental principle. I'm an old guy. I'm 73. Very happy. I've been the 12, last 12, 13 years have been the happiest of my life, and I've had a good life. So it's, it's, and I was just talking with Paul about that. I, I do live from fundamental principles, and that's one of the ones I forgot to mention to Paul, is living from contribution. It doesn't have to be uh, some big, expansive, you know, act. Of, and, and when you were talking, it just reminded me of these bananas I bought yesterday. You know, a big, they're in a bunch, you know, right off the tree, and I'm walking out with the fruit, and I'm holding the fruit in plastic bag, and the bananas, I didn't have them in the bag. I was holding them by the stem. I'm walking down with this big bunch of bananas, right? There's a little uh, uh, collection of motorcycle taxis. Not too far. You go to Ekamai, walk to the right, and before you know it, you'll see them. There's four or five of them sitting there. And there's two of these security guards that probably make next to nothing, and they, they have flags for the little strip mall to get the cars in and out. They're you know, trying to stop the traffic to get the cars in and out. These guys hang out there all day in the hot sun. I mean, it's hard work, these motorcycle guys and, and all that other stuff. And they see me coming with the bananas, right? And without saying a word, I just, because I had way more bananas than I needed, yeah. I just lifted up the bunch and put it to the security guard, and he took one off. And then I hear, hey! And I went over and gave a banana to each of the three motorcycle guys that were sitting there with their motorbikes. That's living from contribution. It's like, it was, you know, it's just, you know, can be simple stuff. Just you know, give a couple of bananas to the motorcycle taxi guys. 
<laughs> yeah, I got another one that you reminded me. One of the things that a lot of foreigners don't do, and this is a great one everybody can do, is instead of going to 7-Eleven to buy everything, go to the little shop near your house. Like, just look in there and see what they have. And then if they have water, just buy water there. Thai people, they notice. So this foreigner, he always goes to 7-Eleven. That foreigner, he buys the local, right? That's simple. But people notice, right? You guys know, right? The locals, you guys know. Yeah, sometimes I, I, I play uh, saxophone. And sometimes at night I go, you know, just playing some music close to the klong. And, you know, I was into my thing. I, I, I would not uh, think that people would give me feedback. But over the month, people, they came to me and said, yeah, you know, ah, it's you, I finally meet you. It gives you so much joy, you know, in the, mo- in the, in the evening. I, can- I open my window, I listen to you. I, I don't play it really well, but just, you know. And it's just the small things. And they... they in Thailand, in Bangkok, sometimes you can feel very lonely, I, I, you know. And people, as I said yesterday, Thai people, they don't give a shit. In a good way, they, you know, they can leave you, let you do your own thing, and they don't, you know, you don't, you don't believe in their king, so you, you, probably they don't, they don't uh, relate to you. But if you do some things that, that are not disabled, that are, you know, that don't, things that don't break the continuum and that are good for everybody they can tell you so that's that's kind of cool to 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 feel part of the group in that way it's, sometimes it's very small yeah okay. all right so so we're, this might be pretty long if we do it this way but if you guys have a better idea <laughs> let's see what, what did your what did your partner oh okay yeah thanks that was interesting uh helpful um my partner, I was listening, so I, I was just listening pretty deep. I mean, and I think uh, you're going by, uh, what's the name you're going by? Uh, Cole. Cole. Yeah. So uh, Cole was telling me, what I, what I heard was a desire for genuine connection with people uh, and people he's not pushing away and a desire for more, uh, I don't know if this is right, a desire for more internal stability. Um, and there were a lot of details around that, but... Um, more what? Internal? Internal stability, connection with other people, not pushing people away, uh, a tendency to make friendships and get really excited about something and then sort of back off of it and like not like the person. And that's, that's what I was uh, hearing. Uh, we were just sort of in a, in a conversation about the... Um, he and I have pretty similar backgrounds and there's a lot of uh, things... Uh, reaction to the parents that can cause that that I saw in myself and that I've seen in a few people I've worked with where um, it's uh, unstable love from the parent can cause us to have a behavior where we sort of like really worship something or really push it down and I've been working in my own self on moderating that a lot Uh, and that's sort of what I was latching onto as he was talking and thinking about how I worked through I've worked through I think a lot of that to a point of seeing trying to trying to really be careful when I'm looking at things d- delusionally and just like see things as they are um, okay. so but it's, yeah it's like an internal thing so it's yeah. signing, not much to come it's a and nurturing connection so yeah. I can make the connection it's just putting yeah. in the steps or the effort to sustain and nurture that so I can t- continue to grow I sort of like will do that and make a connection with someone and then that sounds like it, therapy to me therapy either get oh, distracted okay. or Move on to the next thing, or get disappointed, yeah. or whatever. Set some time aside to do just that. Like mm-hmm. I'll forget to call friends. I go, wait a second. Yeah. I need to call Good. five friends a day. Always. Oh yeah. And otherwise, I just put it off, put it off. Put yeah. That's, yeah. That's staying on. One thing I know, I remember I had a Thanksgiving that was really, really lonely because I didn't know anywhere to go, and I just sent twenty people texts that said Happy Thanksgiving, yes. and then I forgot about it. And then over the next like four hours, I got all these texts back that said "Happy Thanksgiving," and I felt amazing. And so like my brain didn't even know that I had manufactured that, right? I felt it was like, oh, look at all this love I'm getting from these people saying "Happy Thanksgiving," and it was just very easy. And just like put, you just kind of put the things out. One part, like my left hand puts it out in the world, and my right hand gets it back, and it felt really good. Right. Well, one thing I do is I post on Facebook where I am, and then it sounds weird, but then a friend will text and say, "Are you here?" You know, 
I'm here too. So just by being putting myself out, you know, because they don't watch all the time. Right? They might not even know I'm in Bangkok or in California or whatever, you know. But like, like New Year's Eve happened because I posted that I was at Sean's house, right, in Lombok, and then somebody, one of my fraternity brothers, he ran to the house in Santa Barbara, calls me up. It's like eight o'clock at night. It's raining like the devil, and it's dark, and it's going to be a miserable New Year's Eve. And he goes. We got duck, lots of fucking, every kind of fucking hand job meat you can imagine. Wine, beer, everything. He says, we got too much food. We come over and party. And, when I, and I hadn't seen him for years. You know. I went over there, he was so happy to have us help eat because they had bought the way too much food. And then we had a great New Year's Eve. I mean, great. We spent the night in this mansion. It was all because I posted, you know, that I was in Lombok. I put myself out there. Yeah. 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 Well, that that was about, amazing. What about your last Sunday? Was it your last Sunday? It was on freaking Christmas. And I told you, don't do it. Nobody's going to yeah. show up. Yeah. 30 did show up. <laughs> I was yeah. like, that's how miserable guys' lives Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. It's, well, it's all a fantasy. We yeah. people pretend like you're so busy, you know, but there's so many people. They would love to do something with you guys. Their fans? Yeah. That's serious. That's oh, he was a huge yeah. summon. It was great, oh, too. This is giving yeah. back. Yeah. Putting something out on Christmas for all the guys that are around. Well, you know, I felt it, too. You know, I, yeah. you know like the Christmas, a lot of it is just a big hocus pocus fan. Yeah. 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 And then you got two weeks to do nothing. Yeah. yeah You're spending time with people you don't really want to be with. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So we're going to pass it around the other way, you know. All right. It's Fox. So my teammate, my partner is uh, Brett. All right. Yeah. So um, right now he's been traveling two months, or sorry, working two months, traveling two weeks. And his goal is to be able to work two months and travel two months. He doesn't want to really move to any other country. He feels about three months in any place is good. So he doesn't have to worry about long-term visas. So it's about him um, be able to basically continue his lifestyle, but be able to do more of it and have more freedom and not have to be working all the time. He's got a kick-ass invention, which he's working on. And if he pulls that off, he could be making a lot of money and uh, he wants to bury a lot of that in the ground. So, <laughs> so he's basically already doing what he likes, but just wants to have more of that and be able to uh, enjoy himself more and uh, not have to keep going back to work so much, but be able to uh, go back and forth and be able to balance it out more. Does that sound right to you? Yeah. yeah. Sweet. So it sounds like you've got to push to go from invention to you know, product to you know, sales distributors. I already have it. Product, no, but made out there. Yeah. Like the next stage where it's real out there. Yeah. 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 I already talked to Rick Prism that's going to make it. I already got a company that's nationwide that's going to sell it. They already, <laughs> already want to. And, um, yeah. We'll do, but you'll see if it works. We'll see if it works or it doesn't. It's like anything yeah. else in life. You never know. I have an exit strategy already. Uh, whatever. So we'll see about that. But it can work or not work. I don't care. So maybe you guys can hold each other accountable there? You know, kind of push each other to do it? You know? Sure. Yeah. Say, well, I haven't seen the fucking stores yet, you know. Yeah. yeah. Right. I want to see that thing in the store. But I do have three things going right now. You know, I'm also doing the other, my other yeah. business, uh, build up, and then yeah, then I'm also buying a place, and uh, the idea is to just basically be paid off real soon, cash, whatever. Um, and yeah, and also to have relationships in you know other countries and what have you. But I should, Fox already is on what he's. Been doing he's been traveling different places all the time told him keep doing you know he's what you're doing he eventually wants to have uh you know more money basically work online very few hours and meet people in different places so that he has connections everywhere um and friendships everywhere and then f figure out which places he likes the best maybe if he has enough money yeah get a place somewhere possibly down the road um, that he can bounce out of, maybe. Um, and he's already traveling everywhere because his job lets him do that right now. So it's working. And he already has friends. 
in different places and it's working. And he's already ran from a chick recently. <laughs> so, <laughs> physically. So, yeah, yeah. So he's on the right track at an early age. And I told him about Tim, too, because, uh, you know, he's not the older guy that has all the wisdom about a lot of things, but he's the younger guy that might be able to sell products that are more technical stuff because he knows what's going on. So, anyway, because... Because Tim as is, is amazing right now. He's working a few hours and you know closing a couple deals a day for a lot of money. And anyway, yeah, basically on that. Thank you, Brett. Uh, I got a really kick-ass situation going on right now, um, but I don't want to have to rely on that. You know, I'm looking down the, and and have to always go go back home whenever it's time to uh, to work again. I'd like to have the freedom to you know, go three months or wherever. And so I understand that to really do that, I'll have to create something that I can do anywhere and not just based in one place. Uh, but I'm, I'm happy with what I got now, but I'm thinking of in like three to five years what I want to be doing. So I'm understanding that that's the next level that I got to push myself on. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Next. Yeah. All right, I'm talking to uh, my man, Mohammed over here. And uh, what he's interested in is a base in, in Thailand, a place where he can stay for six, three to six months um, and do his thing and work. And what I hear mostly is this: he wants a simple life. He doesn't want anything complicated. Um, he seems you know, super content, but he does want a base. So enough stability of a, a place to, to call... Uh, semi home, not home, but semi home. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and uh, it seems like he's on a fact finding mission right now to 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 suss out what um, what's the right place for that base in Thailand. Exactly. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, and my partner here, uh, 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 he's actually. Uh, um, uh, looking f for um, ways to uh, control his uh, guilt, actually, and, uh, and, and guilt, uh, uh, emotions, basically, and uh, improve his um, relationships. That's basically it. And... Um, uh, improve his life as well. Yeah, and and yeah, that's less, basically uh, less, the best. Uh, less guilt. And drama and, and guilt, basically. And also, I mentioned like the trying on of the wolf. You know, so we were talking about the the idea of a wolf. Um, it doesn't always necessarily resonate with us, but as an exercise, as a practice, like let's try this. Let's break up with the girl. See if in a week's time you're like, I really miss her. I miss how she makes me feel. And then I know I actually came from a place of power like I've never broken up with a girl in all my relationships I've just let it fade out or I disappeared or I've let them break up with me or I've made it where they had to break up with me but I've never stood in the power I've been like you know what I don't want to spend time with you anymore I think that's a good thing to try at 43 to like what's that like you know so I'm, I'm trying to try that on so you're going to break up yeah okay yeah, yeah. that's a big deal yeah Okay, so my friend Joe, uh, he did his shit, like he, he worked all his life in California and um, he got a house, a beautiful, like you see, you show me your Porsche and stuff, so he, he did financially good. Uh, I think what his lifestyle is now is getting more like me, like um, um, really accept the things we, we get here. And uh, he got a really expensive divorce. So he's still in process, I think. So still, okay. So it was probably an expensive lesson you got. <laughs> and um, and now I think he probably has to sell some asset or keep some like investing asset and, and, and leave a part of, of the year somewhere else, probably in Thailand. He's starting oh. discover, discovering Thailand because you have also a date on Monday with a Thai lady of your age, like beautiful. So it's, um, I mean, yeah, 
Joe deserves it. He worked all his life, and I think it's uh, it's gonna be a, a life changing um, for him. <laughs> so. Antoine is an entrepreneur. He's been doing this for a long time, something I probably should have done, but I uh, got stuck in the Western rut. Uh-huh. But uh, he's talking about reevaluating your life's goals probably on a regular basis. Uh-huh. Decide if you want to have children, if this is a place you want to be, maybe move somewhere else. Uh-huh. Um, just kind of decide where you want to be in life and yeah. being young enough to be able to make those decisions as opposed to having it gone through multiple bad <laughs> relationships <laughs> that were very expensive you can uh, uh, learn from everybody else yeah. and decide where this, where you want to be you've worked in the western countries and now mm. over here in Thailand it just depends on which place works out the best for you yeah if I can avoid some obvious mistake uh, from you guys I mean and maybe do more sophisticated mistake <laughs> it's always about that <laughs> Uh, and uh, yeah, um, I'm, I'm different than our friend here, like probably more versatile, like I like to move, I like new ideas and stuff like that. At the same time, like we say about contribution, uh, you need some center at some point, you need to give back and that's why I'm here also is for the social things, which I'm not, I have other capability, but I'm not that good at friend social, like I mean, it's not natural on me. Like, I mean, yeah. Like, he said you wanted to have kids, right? I mean, I'm thinking. That's yeah. a big deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking, yeah. Yeah, I mean, one day, and it's all, because all, now with all this red pill knowledge, all is blow away, right? It's tabula rasa. And then, what you rebuild? What kind of education you want to give? What, everything is to rethink now if you get a kid. You know, like, but you don't have this stuff. I think so, yeah, one day I want to give. How many? I'm one or two. Yeah. 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 Um, between f- five and 15 years, I would give it to me. <laughs> because I'm not that mature, so, <laughs> yeah, I'm giving it. Mm. Yeah, it's a big deal, I know. <laughs> like getting married or what? No, no, no. I mean, I want a kid, not necessarily getting married. No. Having a, a good deal with a girl, like, uh, I mean, a girl like, can have a relation, and she knows even when it's over, she's not gonna screw my life, and I can still. That means we need, I, I have to stay somewhere. That's also things I have to think. I mean, we need to stay geographically close. And uh, I don't know, yeah. I don't know what model, actually. I'm, to be honest, I'm lost. <laughs> do, you, do you know anybody who's doing what? Yeah, you know, there must be somebody doing what you want to do. Yeah. Mm. I mean, Interesting, yeah. like, right? Who is that? Um, or is it just a dream? At that point, it's it's more imaginary because who is doing that? It's more like the people like they go, uh, like we were talking about on hotel, you know, like traditional. Yeah, the main bit, uh, the girl. Okay. He, he has, it's still on control, these things, and like, and he can do his life, and she uh, um, will raise the kids, um, and, but it's not really the model I want, but at the same time, I, I don't have a counter model to, to, to oppose, to propose, I mean, I, I know the classic model today with the uh, woke uh, moms, uh, it's the total mess, I know what is, doesn't work, but I don't know what it could walk, or, yeah. Because kids, kids are a very real fucking thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, if you just go into it, you're gonna end up married. I mean, that's the way it works. Yeah. You know, pretty much. You What's that? What did you say? You, you pretty much end up being married. No, Most of the time, when you get married. I mean, unless you have a very specific person that you're gonna copy, in some unusual situation, you're sleepwalking into a nightmare. You know, pretty much. Okay. You mean Western world or just anywhere? I mean, I don't know, you know. For me, if you're not... If fuck you're, that. If yeah. you're with a woman but you're not married, you're really married if you're not seeing other women. So you're really married even though you didn't get the paper. Yeah. 
So, yeah, but there's yeah, a, there's a dis- no, but there's that. a financial it's advantage a to that though too. Well, sure, yeah. Yeah. you could save on that, but then the kid, you're gonna probably provide for. They're gonna help her provide for that. You're gonna probably, if it's a boy, you definitely want to be a work girl in their lives, right. right? But you don't want to leave a boy without a dad because then they're the in the wreck. So anyway, mm. yeah, I mean kids mean like. Her breastfeeding, you making uh, some food, you know, somebody cleaning the toilet, somebody running around and getting diapers. I mean, it's two people right. always together, basically. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like for a long time, too. And it's well, hell. So it's difficult. So it really is challenging. Mm-hmm. See, for me, it ended up being easier to have my ex-girlfriend out of the picture completely, and since she was such an alcoholic drug addict, it was it worked out great that she didn't <laughs> show up like the twice a year. You know, it worked great. Um, but like, I had to hire a nanny, you know, it was hard. You know, when she was young, I'm doing all this stuff I had never dreamed of, right? Mm. Uh, um, so anyway. No, but like Ronnie said, I need a strong uh, counter model. Like, if not, I will finish like a normal mother, like, not really married on paper, but married anyway with the kids uh, as a transaction. I, I, yeah. I, don't, I don't think you need a, a model. I think you need to think. Because if you, how it works is you see something you want, and then you approach it, right? You don't like think, I want to find something I want to approach it, right? It's like you don't want anything. You gotta want something, right? You're like, I wanna have this many kids, I wanna do this, I wanna make this commitment, right? Like, you know, and you see somebody doing it, you know, you see a house you wanna build, you know, and then you go do it. Don't don't let yourself be like what happens is you can sleepwalk into hell in this. And I'm not saying it's necessarily hell, but if you just let it go. You're just going to become another blue pill guy, you know, who 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 is just a slave, you know. I mean, if that's what you want, like you don't know, like I don't know what's inside you, you know. All of us have our own, and a lot of guys want that. So I'm not saying it's anything wrong with it, but I, I would take, I would be asking myself some very hard questions, because I was, I, 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 you know, I had a kid and I was looking, and I thought I want to, I knew what I wanted, and I thought I had an agreement for that. And it turned out not to not to work in that way, but I'm still happy that I have a kid. So I also like Brent got a little bit lucky in a way, you know, because it did work out, you know. So, but a lot of times it doesn't, where you end up just really being unhappy and just saying, "How did I get here?" And then you're stuck for 20 years mm. with somebody you really don't like because you didn't think about it. Like you got to really, when it comes to kids. It's no, there's no, you got to fucking know this is really which country you're going to, where you're going to do it, when you're going to do it, because five to 15 years. I delay a maximum because I was, I know I wasn't ready. I know uh, I'm being lied and I didn't know why exactly, but I had that feeling. That's why I delay the kids because I know with the kids, it was no going back and, and yeah. Like, yeah, but the, the thing is that 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 just more confusion. If you want a kid, like when I wanted a kid, like I was talking to my brother, walking past T Street Beach, and I was and and he said, "Why did you never have kids?" And I told him, and he goes, "You know, that's not a good reason." And, and it was he was right, and it wasn't is was a personal thing, right? And I thought, yeah, and then I started telling everybody that I knew, you know, I'm thinking about having a kid. You know, and then within like a few months, I found somebody and had a kid, and I'm glad I had a kid. You know, so I decided what I was going to do, and I immediately went into action to make it come real, because I knew that's what I wanted. Right? If you're saying 15 years, yeah. that does not like sound something you really fucking want, and don't let yourself be lazy like that. Yeah, maybe it's because you, you know. feel emptiness. I mean, okay, maybe, you feel empty, right? Yeah, yeah, that's fair. You don't know what you want. You feel I empty. Get, like, yeah. yeah. We talk That's about fine. girl. I get girl. Okay. No, I know it works. Okay. And then, a kid, I don't know. So maybe it's just because I want to uh, furnish the emptiness. See, this is the typical thing. This is exactly what I heard yesterday. 
the boss is saying, you know, like basically, I feel anxiety, so I want to have a kid. That's not, that doesn't fix the kid. It doesn't, this feeling of loss, this is, this is a perfect, girls see you as a perfect slave, you know, because you don't know what you want, but you think that somehow this is going to fulfill you, but it won't. Having a kid, if you talk to anybody with a kid, they're going to tell you, grow the fuck up. It ain't going to fix it. You know what I mean? And fast. Because when you bring a kid in, then they're in that thing. So if you have a bad plan, let's say you have a bad plan, and you have to pay the price. So you, pay, you borrow too much money on your credit card, and then you have, you have to pay it back, and you have debt or whatever. It's fine. It's your debt. When you bring a kid in with a stupid idea, then the kid has to pay. Right? You don't want your kid to pay for your own bad idea. So I'm not, Things can go wrong. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying... You know, but you have to think that way when it comes to kids. You you need to think seriously about that. Yeah. There, there's, you know, however it turns out, this is really at least do your best when you make that kind of decision. And if you don't really want a kid, if you're using it to solve something, then it's probably not going to solve yeah. anyone. No. You, you got to start talking about that. This is a very, very important thing. It's hard for me to say because I have a daughter, right? Um, when you start to have a kid... Uh, it's really hard and people you know how we talk about women how it is and we're different and we're getting out a bunch of truth this is hard for me to say because i have a kid and you don't want to say anything that's bad but in the beginning it's really hard you know the diapers this and that and it's hard but when they get to be about five and i went to parenting school twice so i know something about this subject as well as just my own experience um when they get to be five to ten they're amazing it'll be amazing like you can teach them however you want you know multiplication while you're then say you were skateboarding and then you're gonna read and then you're gonna, you could do it any way you want you know it's amazing but then after 10 5 to 10 is golden but then after 10 they start to be 12 they have their own ideas they get they can start driving you crazy then teenagers it gets even freaking more crazy and then all this Blame it on Oprah. Oprah said it's the worst, what was it? Uh, the most unfulfilling or appreciated thing you could possibly do in life is have a kid. That's how bad it gets later. And I know you're in the middle of the good part right now, but I have to say the truth. That's actually the truth. I thought my kid was different. I mean, we do martial arts together. We hang out like buddies. It's not going to happen to me. Oh, fuck yeah. It happened to me too. So, I mean, we're closer. We do. We still get together. We'll go shoot hoops. We'll do some wrestling, lift weights. Freaking we're best buddies. But I hardly even see her anymore. And she's gone and freaks out in weird ways how adolescents do drives you crazy and um just like we talk about women how the truce i'm just giving you some truths about having a kid okay yeah do you love her oh yeah absolutely but that doesn't mean i get to see her that doesn't mean you're gonna get love back later you won't get the love you want back i'll guarantee it but, but again, this is all totally different topic. Yeah. If you feel lost, right, and no meaning in your life, do not... Count on that. Too. Do not try to bring a kid in because this is what you do when you know yeah. you've solved these issues and you're ready yeah. and you know why you're doing it and what you're going to do. And you know, like, you're going to put up with this yeah. and, and you're going to be fine mentally and everything, right? Yeah. You know, but I, I would say definitely it's good you shared it because... Because it's like a, a lot of people do that. Ask any older people. People yeah, have, guys, people have kids trying to fix their life and it fucking, it makes it worse. It makes it worse. Yeah. People will tell you that. Older people will tell you that. You know, and then they feel bad because they know, you know. The kids don't know, but the parents It's really your job to just get them ready for life and then poof, they're gone. You're never going to receive the love back that you think you're going to get. You're just not. You know. I don't between I don't know between space, five and ten, yeah. At 16, they're gone. Yeah. They're, they're yep. their own person, whatever that is. Yep. I got five I'm kids, by the way. Yeah. I got married. I got married because I was lonely and I didn't, yeah. I didn't face the loneliness and it was just fear based. Um. And I look back. So you need to face the loneliness. Yeah, I like 
it's like a, I want to love. That's, it sounds like so naive, I know. <laughs> no. It's like yeah, it's I mean, a normal desire. It's yeah. just yeah. no. I, I'm more red I, I cannot really, really love <laughs> a girl like before. It's gone. It's gone forever. Yeah. So what can I do? No, love yourself. You can talk about it. There's no solutions. We're gonna give you a solution right now. Yeah, yeah. But you can just be fucking honest. Yeah. Don't 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 pull this hocus pocus with, you know. I want to have a kid. It's like no man. No, I got to deal with this existential problem I got. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's the thing. Solve. Work on that. Work on that. And then, then you'll know. It's kind of like the girlfriend. You break up with her. Then you decide if you can want to go and devote your life to giving her money, right? Yeah. You know. But it's like first solve the problem. Don't mix the two because then you'll just... No, I agree. More I you, know. you, more I feel like lost in the, in the like, storm ocean yeah. and I'm trying to grab a stick of food or something. Yeah, and then usually it's like one kid, then another kid. And then a house, and then this, and then that. There's always a society has another contract to sign to solve these problems, which it doesn't do, but it just makes you more of a slave and more confused, and you got more burdens. And, you, and we're a little you know, older. The loneliness yeah. thing, I like how you said you go to NA, you have yeah. this other organization here, you got another thing you do, and it's like, I think a lot of the younger guys are so much on the computer. They're not even getting any human contact. They're probably going to have more loneliness. But loneliness is also a little normal. Even us, yes. we, we're lonely too. Even with all yeah. our friends. Or yeah. So, you know. yeah, yeah, you're going to feel lonely. You're going to feel yeah. oh, meaningless. I mean, we're just spinning around on this gaseous planet <laughs> in the middle of nowhere with no purpose, right? So, of course, you're not sure, right? You know, nobody fucking knows, you know. You know so, yeah, that's it's totally normal, but... Yeah, good, good, good. Make, All right. Make peace with the loneliness. You can do it. Yeah. It's awesome. Plus it changes too. Don't think that I'm lonely now, so I'm going to get older and be more lonely, and then it's going to get worse. You're just creating this stupid story in your mind. Yeah. Just say, just man up and say, I'm fucking lonely. I'm fucking lost. Okay, now let me go get a fucking pad thai. Yeah. yeah. And let's go talk to yeah. talk And then I'll go to the gym. Let's go talk to yeah. three yeah. more men. Let's just yeah. In the gym. And if you're going to make a decision, call one of us. <laughs> call me. I think you're doing this. And I'll just keep, I'm going to tell you not to do it. But, but I think the big thing is just admitting it to yourself and just yeah. moving on. Yeah, Sometimes no one answers. You just walk in. Yeah. You, just, you just talk to yourself and say, yep, lonely. Yep, no purpose. All right. Let's see. What do I got to do now? Right, I got to get some fucking vegetables. <laughs> yeah. I need yeah. a man. It's the simple things that keep you, uh, that, that save you from this sometimes. Yeah. Uh, cleaning the room, getting some food. Mm. You know, it's when you give up on those things is when, you know, I mean, that's where people drink, take drugs, just sit around, you know. So it's amazing what getting a haircut, even if I don't like my haircut, but I got a haircut, right? So at least, it's, you know, and I'll be back in a couple of weeks. I'll get another one. Yeah. 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 Embrace emptiness. So Tim, uh, he launched a company, he lives in Bali, uh, and uh, he wants to, um, he wants to um, make it profitable, uh, he has a specific number in mind. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and he, 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 wanted, he, he wanted to figure out where the relationship with women could fit in that program. So he didn't want it to uh, give it the first uh, the, the first place, and he didn't want it also to have no girl at all. So he, he wanted to figure out that. That's what I understand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Like you said yesterday, business. Yeah. 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 Just at that, um, at that crossroad, right? Where you know you're kind of focusing your energy on the right things that matter. And yeah, I I guess not getting caught off guard by a girl that might have a certain agenda um, and capability to take away your attention from those things. So for me, I am at that crossroad where, you know, 37, you know, you're building things, working with other people on creative projects. So it's just about focusing on uh, splitting my time 
evenly between my purpose, um, I, I guess the dating scene, whatever I want to do there, and making money. Make money bone chicks? Yeah, man. Sounds like. <laughs> yeah. keeping, it, keeping it simple, though, too. Well, you've you got know. fun in your life already. You serve. 100%. I'm, I'm very content. How old are you? I'm 37. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I, I said it to Ronan many years ago. Uh, I was a very different person probably eight years ago when we first touched base. I was very lost, confused, and didn't really have many uh, mentors, you know, guidance from men that were older, more experienced than myself. And coming up to this stage in my life, I've, I feel that I've, I've found my network. I've, I've built a, a really good foundation of uh, how to navigate life, how to identify red flags uh, in business, relationships, um, and yeah, just life in general. So I'm pretty happy about that. Sounds like pedal to the metal. For sure, that, that is what stage it is at now. It's like, okay, how do I gather all the information, experience that I've built over the last couple of years and how do I put that into the right direction to leverage it? Build a business. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's, what, that's the answer. Yeah. So, yeah, I was speaking with uh, Nicholas and a uh, very kind Frenchman. He's got uh, children here in Bangkok. He moved himself over here. Um, had a former ex-wife she's over here but you know the relationship's amicable, am amicable he's got a new girlfriend everything seems fine on that front however yeah he seems at a transitional point in his life where he wants to form a new career in the same field so he's a teacher but he's really looking to take it to that next level uh, and start consulting online so in order for him to do that, he obviously needs to um, build out the assets to do that, be it a website, um, to be able to contact people outside of this country because he's already got the work here, but he needs to contact you know, some of the international schools. So, yeah, in my mind, knowing a bit about the online space, uh, I, I think that he, he is at a stage where he just needs to understand what the offer is, you know, how he's going to position that product online. Uh, what Video. kind of, yeah, what kind of assets he's going to build. 100%. Yeah. yeah. And, um, yeah, I think he will do great. He just needs to understand, you know, um, the exact audience that he wants to target, the product he's going to deliver, what that looks like, how he's going to charge the client, and then get to work, you know. But I really do believe that he could execute on that in, you know, less than six weeks from start to finish because he already wow. does it. He just needs to transition that to the online model but he needs some guidance around that and yeah. you know do what I do, fucking Ronan would be able to do it yeah 100% what I would do is I would make a YouTube channel start talking about third culture kids challenges they have you know I'm a literature teacher I specialize in this and also I guide you know expat children they get out of whack things get fucked up you know and I want to and I help uh, families disintegrate overseas. It happens all the time, right? Everything falls apart when you get out of your... You know, you leave France, it's totally different here, right? It's, France is such a, like, close culture, right? Like Japan, you know? And then you leave and you don't know what to do. Like, what is the family supposed to do, you know? Yeah, uh, it's small, the French, French group is small, the same fucking people every day, yeah, it's, you know? It's, it's just stinky, like... Yeah. Yeah, too close, yeah. Codependent. I had a yeah. great uh, childhood because I would, I would live in the, in the country, I would do shit with my bike and, uh, you know, swim the rivers. And, and when I see the people like stuck in Bangkok and my age, they're doing nothing just on the computer. So I, it breaks my heart. So I, I think I can, yeah, I, 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 want, to, I want to give. To so, so what I'm saying is like yeah. make a YouTube channel, okay. talk about specific expat kids, what they got into, start researching problems, you know, go to like the school nearby and say, tell me about problems kids have gotten into here. You know, expat kids, they're not being watched, they're not under the societies in Rainbow. It's different here, you know, you have different challenges. They can buy beer, you know, like things are just a little bit more wilder here. And, you know, they don't have the nature, they don't. No nature, no French culture. 
nobody judging them. They can just be, you can be pretty weird here and people will let you do it, right? Yeah. You know, you can yell, no one's going to, you know. Sometimes society is crazy, but sometimes when you have no society to back you up, yeah. you, you end up like feeling, no you know, no. and yeah. just like in the void, like, you know. Yeah, so, 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 so take your experiences, you know, and then, but go to the expat schools and find the kind of horror stories okay. and then start making French videos telling these stories and say, you know, these are the kind of things that I help. This is the kind of, you know, horror case that happens in Bangkok, happens in Tokyo, happens in Singapore. You know, believe me, it happens in Tokyo. It doesn't matter how safe it is for adults. Kids are totally fucking different. They get into trouble here. Yeah. yeah. And so you're like, I understand this. I can help them and start making videos about specific problems. Research. Just tell them, like, what happened in this school? He started selling drugs. He went to jail. Family got divorced. Get all these horror stories and start telling, making videos about him. And, like, this is, you know, tell people, and this is, you know, what I, I help. I care about this. And believe me, those videos will go. Every time, if the titles are good, you know, before you move to Bangkok with children, you know, you know, start making these videos, trust me, you're going to get hits, and those hits are going to be good hits. Yeah. I have six YouTube channels, and a lot of them are on specific problems, right? So once you start doing this, you believe, you, you're giving out your heart, you're pouring it out there. People are like, fuck, I'm hiring this guy, 100%, right? You'll have people, you'll have people signing up, and then you can even have some more videos about when you go home from expat, challenges they'll have, and they'll keep hiring you when they're gone, right? Because because they have to go through when they get home, it's the reverse culture shock. Yeah, like yeah, people stay stuck here, scared to go home. Yeah, they don't they don't speak good French. They speak you know kind yeah. of a, yep. in between exactly. English yeah. and French, and they go to go to southern France. I'm scared. I cannot go. Yeah, I don't want. I don't. I don't be. I, I would not be able to make friends. Yeah, I, I don't get, they don't have a country. Yeah, they, they have no country. Yeah, yeah, yeah in between. Yeah. You got to read that book, Third Culture Kids. You got to find that book and read it. It's gold. I got, I got yeah. to say. Okay. Um, and we got we to wrap up pretty, pretty soon. Okay. Um, yeah. Oh, maybe I, I, I say later because I, I want to finish that. Okay. Episode, but yeah, I, I can keep it. So make a YouTube channel. Okay. That's the way to do it these days. You, you can write if you want, but no one reads <laughs> videos. Good titles, videos, you know, boom, powerful, right? Yeah. True stories. Yeah, trust me, people will call you. I mean, look around the room. <laughs> In talking with Joey, he has a daytime job, and he's been blessed to start a side hustle, which is an online consulting business. And there have been times where the side hustle outproduces the day job. So again, it's a great concern problem to have, ultimately, his red pill ideal lifestyle entails being able to travel internationally with the side hustle gig, knowing that he just needs a phone, computer, laptop. Let me ask, do you want, if, if you get rid of this girl, do you want a different relationship or what's your kind of goal? Yeah, like if you, I'm if glad you go away, that, what are you gonna like in the back of your mind? Like, I'm glad that he mentioned it. I'm glad you followed up with it because no one is more red pill than me and you're looking at me like I have four heads because I'm in a relationship. And I understand it <laughs> because I, I feel the same way when I look in the mirror. Like, am I a walking, talking contradiction? But the fact of the matter is I am living my life on my terms. And I love the lady, but I told her, listen, I'm traveling the world. To your point, I love and respect what you and you especially say, because you have such conviction and you own it, and I'm on board 110%. The lady or the relationship has to come into your frame. You don't go into their frame. So at this point in time, she's on board with me, having some health concerns and doing everything that I want to do internationally. I'm doing it. I'm traveling. And I always ask courtesy, professional courtesy, even though I know the answer when I ask, hey, I know you, you have a real job. You're not at liberty to go, but you're always invited. And she does join me occasionally. But it's a great relationship. But I have to not be selfish, but ultimately stay true to who you are. I stay true to who I am. And per the car thing, yeah, I've got 
a real nice sports car, real nice luxury uh, Lexus and all that, in addition to bought and paid for. But when I come here, the last thing I want to do is drive a freaking car. So to me, it's a, a burden, and it's certainly not necessary. Ronan, real quick, what was your question, and then I'll wrap it up. Well, basically, like, what if, you know, you mentioned the girl at the same time, or he, you know, basically mentioned at the same time as, like, wanting to be free. Is there, like, a little bit of decision to be made? And if so, what would you possibly go to? I'm anti-relationship. Anti relationship. So you're not getting married for sure. There's zero, less than zero chance, and she understands that. Okay, she understands that. So that will never change. But for a guy who's anti relationship, I sure find myself in a lot of relationships. It's the old adage ladies respectfully think they can change you, and you know, so they end up always hating me because two, three, four, five years down the road, one lady, 35, Filipina, super hot three years together she finally just said I gave you the best years of my life I said bullshit I didn't know you when you were 19 <laughs> so if if and when this should end and it's a, a woman's prerogative to always change their mind I keep my house I keep my money I keep my retirement and I keep my freedom and the short answer to your question is would I replace with another relationship and in a word Fuck no. Stay true to you. Independence, freedom, you cannot put a price on that. So that's all I've got. So in and not in a relationship. Okay. All right. Got it. Got it. All right. So uh, basically, uh, Charlie here is basically happy and done a lot of stuff. You know, successful as a fireman and it's very successful. And then Transition to a yoga teacher, and then transition to a teacher in Singapore, and then teacher here, and now basically became a nude photographer. No, not quite, not quite yet, but soon. Anyway, so <laughs> photographer, and he's happy. He's got this great house. He's got a good situation, and I think it's one of these situations. Seventy-three, basically happy, right? There's no, there's nothing. He's just like. Well, I'm at the end yet. Yeah, yeah. He's like, none of this stuff resonates with him. He's like, happy, things are good, just keep on keeping on. Is that pretty much, did I nail it? Okay, okay. And that's good to know for people, you know, it's like, you go through different seasons of life, right? Yeah, you're not always the same season, right? It's just, you know, certain things, like, that's good to hear, you know? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Paul in the last three, four years has uh, uh, custody issues, building a uh, Ronin uh, network, and has now landed back in Thailand, waiting, uh, and I was glad to hear you say this, living up to your, uh, to your own uh, advice, you know, taking your own advice. He's uh, waiting for some, whatever's next to bubble up, you know, to, uh, to keep building his future. And I think that's about it, right? Yeah, 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 I, I know. <laughs> You know, when I, when I was uh, 20s, smell, eat as many pussies as possible. Then 30s, business, learn how to do, you know, work in a business. And then to start a business and run a business. And then it was new language, new country. Don't want to get too stuck. Don't want to be in one place. Want to be, have a more broad view. Times are changing. China's rising. So that was the next escalator, right? Then China, do whatever I can do to make you know, it happen. Turned out to be a you know, real estate business. Um, and then that ended unceremoniously. Totally lost at 50, not sure what I'm going to do. And then just trying to figure it out. And then went to Japan, ended up in the States. And then you know, my buddy Adam said, hey, Come on to Bangkok, it's awesome. I said, I don't drink, I don't whore, I don't do drugs. Like, what am I going to do in Bangkok? And he's like, you know, you'd be surprised. Bangkok is a mellow place. You'll, you'll like it. And Adam is very, very wise. And I thought, okay, I'll, I'll just get a ticket. Fuck it. I remember I was sitting next to the washing machine in the garage, and, I, and he said that. I said, all right, I'll get a ticket, I'll come over. 
And I came over, and then when I got here, I was kind of like, you know, very blown away because I visited, but now I live here. It's different, right? And I try to figure it out, and then I just, all of a sudden I realize why I'm here. What I was here for was to figure out my next step. So I'm going to wait as long as I can and let my mind pour the cup of coffee out and just have nothing. Just have nothing. Wake up every day with nothing. And just keep talking to people and figuring out if something, you know, what is the thing that's going to grab me I want to do. Then I made the Ronin videos and they ended up, you know, being popular and like people started asking and then that just kind of escalator pulled me up, you know. Then I decided I was going to have a kid, right? I went on that journey and then, you know, that ended unceremoniously, but it brought me, it had a purpose, right? It was a very, very clear purpose, right? And then that ended, then I was like, am I going to stay in the U.S.? Santa Cruz is pretty comfortable. People were like, you can do this, you can do that, take over this business, do this. And I was kind of like, should I do that? It was all very good ideas, all very attractive, but I just didn't feel it quite. So I said, okay, I'm going to go back to Bangkok. And it's kind of like what I came here the first time. So although now it's different because I just kind of realized after we talked, right? Now I'm thinking, I want to go deeper with what I'm doing. Yeah. That I know, right? Whether it's, you know, I had a concept of the 12 disciples, <laughs> you know, the 12 guys that I could really help or, you know, larger summits with, with more, you know, try new things, right? Try new things to grow and bring in new ideas and bring, expand, you know. You're helping humanity. I want to. I want to do that and still feel keep myself right. Yeah. So I want to do that and then, and also I just want to figure out, take the time, and be peaceful enough that the answers will come because the answers come. It's not people think because there's a God. The answers come because you know you're a human. You have desires and you're exposed to things. And then some things are more attractive and you'll be like, yeah, I, I do want to do that, you know. And that's the answer. That's the closest thing to an answer. I say, well, I really want to do that. And then you follow that. And then you feel better, you know. So I'm looking for that kind of what is, I was going to get the house, but it kind of attracted a lot of the wrong type of guys to the house. Is everybody was kind of lost. Or they just, you know, and I, I don't want that. I, I, I'm not looking for that. You know, I really wanted, and I thought, okay, what, what do I want? So I'm now I'm kind of reconsidering, deciding what is the proper direction uh, to go next. And it, it'll become clear to me. Just by, you know, being peaceful, doing yoga, working out hard. And just the last thing I'll say is, because we got to go eat, we got a reservation. But I, um, somebody misinterpreted one of my videos recently. They said, I, I really want to do what you do. Just go to Thailand and meditate. And uh, that is actually very wrong. Yeah, you know, like yoga is extremely painful, you know. And <laughs> it is not fun. Yeah, it is like miserable. And it is like living hell for the first six months, you know. And I'm just getting back into it, you know. So it is not meditating. It is really hard, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah. And lifting weights is dangerous and hard, you know. But one of, one of the things I want to do is get, get more ripped, focus on that, you know. And I might come up with a health product, you know. That's something like that I've thought about doing for like, you know. I'm 58 now, so I'll be almost 60. So I think it could be a good product for people long term. Stay in shape, right? But, um, what was I going to say? Uh, shit, I lost my train of thought. Yeah. Being, being, being more healthy is good because I want to be there for my daughter. You know, when she's 18, I want to be alive. I want to be aware. I want to be able to show her who I am, right? Not just be some old man is, is dead. You know, it's like people, they're, just, they're alive, but they're dead. You know, so one of my things is really to to really ramp it up is physically and keep the vigor, you know. And that's, that's, that's one of the things I really want to do. And that, that benefits me too, right? Oh, yeah. I'm doing it for her, for sure. That's the motivator. But I win too. Everybody wins, you know. So I think that's, that's, that's one of my main goals. That's why I want to do health product. Is so that, because that'll push me to fucking go even harder. So anyway, we got to go. We got to go eat. Thai food, and thank you very much for sharing all your thoughts. Yeah. Yeah.